I'm so bothered. Ten-year-old uh, Lennon Latham recovered from a lake in Miramar's Vizcaya. My son left home with Jalen Jameson, his best friend, his so-called best friend. Hey. But stay woke. Lennon Latham, known as LJ, was an 18-year-old from Mamar, Florida. He was described as ambitious, a leader, selfless, and a sweet soul. He would give someone his last dime if he could. LJ was also very close to both of his parents, who loved him and really took the time to raise their son the right way. He also had a loving sister and a baby brother who adored him. His little brother's first words were actually LJ. He was also extremely ambitious that he started a car wash business to wash rental cars within the community and had dreams to become a pilot once he graduated high school at Mamar High School. Becoming a pilot and just being in the sky was something LJ dreamed about every single day. And he knew he had to work extremely hard for that dream to become a reality. He was currently a senior and had plans to graduate in June 2023 with a 3.9 GPA. He was also accepted to attend Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, a private university focused on aviation and aerospace programs. For any parent, LJ was the perfect son. His mother, Charmaine, who was actually a well-known entrepreneur and businesswoman, would often share how proud she was of LJ on her social media and the man that he was becoming. He just turned 18 on April 7th, so you could tell that LJ was on his way to bigger and better things. But the night of April 11th, 2023, everything would change. On April 11th, 2023, LJ told his mom that he was going out with his best friend who lived in the same complex as he did. LJ knew he had to come home by midnight, which was his curfew, and he always communicated with his mom while he was out. So when 11.30 p.m. came around and LJ was still not on his way home, his mom texted him and called him, but she didn't get an answer. So she called his best friend and asked for LJ. LJ was in the bathroom and left his phone in the car. So shortly after that conversation, she realized it was getting late and she still didn't get a call from LJ, which was very unusual. So she checked his location to see where he was. Now, when she was watching his location pin, she can see that he passed his home. Charmaine knew something was wrong. She got in her car immediately and went straight to Vicaya Park, where the boys went to. When she got there, she couldn't find LJ. She started to panic and called 911 to file a missing persons report. LJ's family was in desperate need to find him, and the search lasted for three days. After three days of LJ missing, his body was later found in a lake at that same park. According to authorities, his death was ruled as an accident and LJ probably drowned. This case did not get national attention and his case is now closed. Now, I know there's a lot of questions and holes with LJ's story and just, you know, doesn't make any sense. There's also some concerns about LJ possibly drowning because Charmaine shared that her son was an excellent swimmer. There's no way he would have drowned. Charmaine and her family deeply feel that something sinister happened to LJ. A beautiful funeral was held for LJ where family and friends came together to speak about how great LJ was as a person. Standing here today, realizing that that probably won't happen, it really hurts, but I see him as a legend, I see him as a friend, I see him as a captain. You always stay that way in my heart, no matter what. The day that I got the news, I was actually flying into Fort Lauderdale. And I saw a Charmaine message 
And as I'm hurting today, I know all of you are hurting just the same. LJ was courageous and he was strong and he was determined. And that's why he loved the color black because it was symbolic of his strength and everything that his mother had instilled in him. LJ was hopeful and he had purpose. So he'd always ask me every class and I'd just give it to him. And I remember the class before the last class we had together, he'd asked me for one of those and I was like, no, like you're never prepared. No, you need to start bringing your stuff to school. And he was like, you are L man's Liz, you are L man for that. And I just laughed and I looked at him. And I remember uh, the week before our birthday, cause his birthday is before mine. Um, we had class together and he looked at me and he was like, you see y'all bought my stuff today. So you ain't, you don't have to give me nothing. You see, I came prepared and I was like, okay, okay. That was the last memory that I had of him. And it's, it's weird cause I was just looking at him the other day in class, and it's sad to see that his seat in class is now empty, that he's not gonna be there anymore, and he's not gonna bother me as I'm doing my work, or hit me in the back of my head with the laptop, and call me an old mans anymore. So, thank you. In two different schools, I couldn't really see LJ. I haven't seen LJ since sixth grade. Just been on the phone with him, and now hearing this is just like, bro, you created a human, you created the amazing human being. Like, he was very, a very good child. A very, very good child. And I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Because it shouldn't happen like this. We have one month until we graduate. One month. He was right there. He was right there. But when I'm weak, he makes me strong. When I'm sad, he makes me happy. That was my best friend. He was my first love. He taught me how to be a mother. He taught me to be selfless. He taught me to be courageous. Charmaine is very open about the situation and she spoke online recently on her Instagram about, you know, LJ's death and the details. And I ask you guys to really be sensitive to what she's saying and how she's feeling because in this video, she's extremely emotional and upset. You know, she's hurt. So try to put yourself in her shoes before you have a problem with her maybe cursing or just angry. You know, she lost her son under very suspicious circumstances. And even though LJ's case is closed, she still desires answers about what really happened to her son. So I really want you to listen to what she is saying in the key details from start to finish. Everyone been asking me what happened to LJ I still don't believe what I was told happened to my son because it doesn't make sense I was told that According to the autopsy that my son drowned, accidental drowning. How does a kid that is an amazing swimmer drowns accidentally? I don't understand that. Makes no sense. I'm still trying to process it. I'm still trying to process it. This shit don't make no sense. My son's been swimming since he was two years old. Diver. I wasn't able to talk about this for a very long time. I 
I'm so bothered. I am so bothered by those motherfuckers. I am so fucking bothered. It eats me up inside. My son left home with Jalen Jameson, his best friend. His so-called best friend went to a park. This guy a park. And then all of a sudden my son got upset about something on his phone and got out of the car. Y'all want to know the truth? Let me tell you the truth because it doesn't add up. My son got out the car, supposedly, and left his phones, supposedly. And Jalen claimed he was looking for my child. A very littered area, right next to Vizcaya. This ain't the hood. We don't live in the hood. I looked at the time, and it's 11.30. LJ knows he has to get home before midnight. 12 o'clock comes. No LJ. I said, this don't make no sense. It didn't make no sense. So I text him. I said, yo, where are you? No response. 12.15, I was like, yo, what's going on? Nothing from my child. So I text his friend, Jalen Jameson, who told me LJ was in the bathroom and his phone was dead. And I said to him, don't lie to me. We live in the same complex. So then I went to LJ's location on his phone because he always turned it on. That's how good my child was. <laughs> Flamingo and coming, 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 coming home. So I watched it. My mind says, screen record this car moving. I don't know why I did that. I screen record the car coming from the location on LJ's phone. The car came in. The car didn't turn to come to my house. The car went to Jalen's house. And in my mind, I'm like, okay. I waited. LJ still didn't come. Call his phone, nothing. So I said, something don't feel right. Maternal instincts, ladies, fathers, mothers, go with your gut feeling. Don't ever, ever second guess it. I jumped out of bed and I jumped in the car. You won't believe when I got to where the car was, it was in front of Jalen's house. Parked up, lights off, everybody gone to fucking bed. So I'm in my mind, they want me to think that my son is in there and I should go home, right? So I started calling again, nothing. Then I text the boy, yo, why LJ's not answering? What's going on? Then he tells me they were at the park and LJ got out the car and he was looking for me, don't know where he went. I said, what? I immediately went straight to the park and started looking for my son and called the police. Called everybody I knew. And they started looking for my son. You know what's the worst part about this? This kid, Jalen Jameson, went and got his parents. His parents went with him to go look for my child. Nobody called me. Nobody came knocking on my fucking door. Nothing. Nothing. You make me wonder why you as parents did not pick up the phone and call me. I didn't even get to see my child. You as parents know this? Went to help your child look for my son? Did not call me? Didn't even call the cops? Till after 
I call the cops? Huh? Who are you? What kind of human being are you? These people have not even come by and said sorry or give their condolences or anything. This little kid that used to eat at my house, go on vacation with us. I fed him like my own, have not even showed up and tell me what happened to my son. Y'all imagine my pain and my anger. Can you even imagine how I feel? It's just the grace of God that's keeping me. I swear to God. And that little boy named Asher. That little boy named Asher. He's the reason why I'm still breathing. Him and my daughter. They are the only reason. They are the only reason. Only reason. And you're gonna say my son drowned? Make it make sense. And as parents, you didn't think to come call me? And that fucking little kid, you didn't think to call the cops? When LJ supposedly be went missing? Huh? You know what? My hands are clean. I have to live with my child being dead. I hope they can live. I hope they can sleep. Because I pray to God that the pain that they have caused me and my family will multiply. I pray everything they do will be cut off. I pray everything that they touch will perish. Because I'm a child of God. And so is my child. I didn't deserve this. My child was getting ready to go to college. He had dreams, he had goals, he had aspirations. All gone, all taken. I couldn't even have an open casket with my child. I didn't even get to see him. The only memory I have of LJ that Tuesday night. He kissed me on my forehead like he always does and he tells me he loves me. He's Asher. He told him he loved him. And I'll see you later, my youth. That, that later never came. He never came back. He never came back. Now I have to tell Asher when he gets older what happened to his big brother. LJ taught Asher to swim. Sunday Asher was swimming from one end of the pool to the next. Some days, some days, it's not easy. <laughs> and I appreciate everybody that reached out every day up to today. There's some people praying for us, showing me love, giving me encouragement. And I appreciate you all. <laughs> the only thing I ask when you guys see me out in public, please. Want to give me a hug that time. I don't want to keep reliving this. Don't ask me what happened. It triggers me. I need to get out. I need to be around people. I can't stay stuck in this depressing state for the rest of my life. So when you see me, wish me the best. Show me love. But don't ask me what happened. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's painful. And it triggers me. It makes my mind go to places it's not supposed to go. I'm 
driving this morning. I'm like, I gotta go see LJ. And it dawned on me, I'm going to see my son at a grave <laughs> This ain't it. This ain't it. I promise you, this isn't it. <laughs> I feel like a piece of me left. I have a void in my heart that nothing or no one can ever make better, or ever fix. This little boy is the only person that can fill that void. And they say time heal all wounds. Speak for yourself. Nothing will ever heal this womb unless God bring him back right here to me right now. <laughs> nothing. 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 <sighs> There's no bright side to this. <laughs> There's no bright side that I have to live with this pain for the rest of my life and coexist in a world that's so fucked up with selfish ass people I know you're supposed to forgive but only God can help me to forgive those motherfuckers that did nothing to save my child nothing nothing you want to go look for my child and did not call me did not call the cops Jalen Jameson I pray you rot in hell I don't know what kind of friend you are and to all the parents, tell your kid, don't trust everybody. Everybody ain't your friend. I used to tell Lil J that all the time. I says, when your friends become your foe, out in the secret, out in the world, your secret goes. I always tell them that. People are only friends with you when it's convenient and when it's beneficial. But when you start progressing in life, they start to hate you low-key hate you for no reason and you're still making breaking bread with them lj would give his last for that little boy lj started a car wash business to wash the rental cars we have he hired Jalen. if i pay lj 60 bucks he giving that little boy 30. now you can pick up the phone and call me right i hope the truth will set you free Jalen jameson and your whole family because I, my prayers for you is never going to stop. Y'all going to suffer and y'all going to feel the pain that you've bestowed on me and my family and my friends. God ain't sleeping. I do believe there's a God. That I do believe. And everybody has their day. Everybody has their day. Everybody. It's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time. And while my son is sleeping, and it's often said they're in a better place, at least he's in a better place for real. I had two dreams of my son. Two dreams. The first time I had the dream was like two or three days after they found his body. <laughs> and he walked up to me with his head down. Whenever I'm disappointed in LJ, he always holds his head down. He walks up to me and he opens my hands like this and he plays something in there. And I picked it up and there was something wrapped in a blue wrapper. And I said to him, LJ, this is fentanyl. This is what kill you. You are dead. You can ask any of my friends. I told him that. I even called the cops and tell them I know what happened to my son. Because he showed me. And he held his head down and he walked off. That was the first dream. The other dream I had of my son. He was a grown man. He had beard. And I said, LJ, you look scruffy. What's going on, bro? And he says, Ma. I'm going to ask Jesus to shave me. And I woke up out of my sleep. 
so I know he's in a better place. I've had friends that have had dream of LJ and shared it with me. One of the dream was LJ was so fixated on making his own jet. He barely comes up. When he does come up, it's for air and smile. And he was so fixated on building his jet. <laughs> and that melts my heart. He loved airplanes. <laughs> and so does his little brother. Asher eats, breathes, sleeps airplanes. But he loves airplanes every day. He talks about airplanes. It's such a beautiful thing. Asher didn't really, I don't think he understands that LJ was a pilot student and LJ flew airplanes. He just turned three. But he's had that passion. And Davina Bennett can tell you, she used to come see Asher at six, seven months and take him outside and he would point up in the sky and say, it, and it turned into airplanes. It turns into airplane and now he's so fixated on airplane. So I know that God has a purpose and a plan. I know that. And you know what amazes me too? Asher doesn't ask for LJ. He's never asked for LJ. He tells you LJ is in the airplane, in the white airplane, up to today. He will say other people are missing and he was like, where did Charlene go? Or, where did grandma go? He has not asked where LJ go. So I don't know what Asher knows, but Asher seems to know a whole lot and is at peace with whatever that is. But he, he, he tells me from LJ went missing that LJ is in the white airplane. You know, so that, that, that is a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. And I just wanted to take the time because I'm so floored with all these messages about what happened to my son and this and that and I just I just can't take it no more. I wasn't able to talk about it at the time because it was under investigation but supposedly according to the report my son drowned accidentally. Beats me. I don't understand that. <laughs> Makes no sense. But I'm, I'm trying to keep it together. It's not easy. I have a whole lot going on. A whole lot. And LJ used to help me with that load and that burden. He was. He was such a good kid. He was my best friend. We talked about everything. I come to see him and I can't even talk to him because it's not the same. <laughs> I should have been going to see my son at Emory Riddle campus, you know? My mind goes all over the place. And I'm yet to fully accept this. It's so hard. Sometimes, to be honest with you, I feel like Eldridge's at his dad. And he's getting ready to come back. And then it dawned on me he's not coming back. My firstborn. I'm happy I was able to give him a taste of the finer things in life. I was happy I was able to take him on a cruise into New York. And he lived in Vegas and Tennessee and Atlanta. Like, he had a good life and he deserved it. I've taken him to the heat game, floor seats. Like, I think I did good. The things that he had a desire for, I was able to fulfill those. I wish I could. I, I Sometimes I wonder, what was his last words? Was he calling me? Was he asking me to help? One Christmas, we went to Minnesota. That was his favorite. He wanted to go back in the summer, and I promised I would take him. I didn't even get to.
One thing's for sure though, I have a lot of memories that nobody can ever take away. I have a lot of memories and pictures and videos of my son. He was such a happy soul. He made everyone around him happy. I know he's looking down and saying, Ma, why are you crying? I can't help it, LJ. I'm human now. I am human. I've always been human. You are no longer human. You don't understand. But I'm going to try to be strong. I'm going to try to be strong. I'm sorry to not have been there, LJ. I wish I was. I would do anything for my child. Y'all can pray for me. Keep praying for me that God will give me peace. And God will help me to forgive. It's a long road. It's by far a very long road. I gotta go now. Y'all take care. Kiss your kids. Hold them. Love them. Tell them you love them all the time. <laughs> Take care, guys. God bless. <laughs> Thank you for the love. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the support. It hasn't been easy. Pray for my mother. Please pray for my mother. She isn't doing well. It's, it hits her even worse than me and she's my child, but you know, he catered to her. He really did. He spent time with her. He understood her. She loved him. She's just not in a good place. In a good place. She doesn't want to do anything, go anywhere. I don't know what else to do. Charlene is doing okay. She's, she's resilient. She has her moments. But she's doing okay. And I'm doing okay too. It's, it's just... It's not easy. It's just not easy. It's, it's not an easy road. It's, it's very tough. Very tough. Very tough. I appreciate everything. And to every mother and father that has ever lost a child. I truly, truly understand that pain. I know exactly how you feel now. Nobody can understand that pain unless you've been there. Unless you've lost a child. This doesn't compare to your grandmother. And it doesn't compare to your mother. It's different. Those are very painful too those are people you love but when you lose a child a child you conceived and carried for nine months that was supposed to bury you it shatters your world like broken glasses and it will just never be the same it will never be the same Take care, guys. <laughs> Look what LJ's, what of LJ's friend did. That's been there for a while. I'm getting in my headstone, a very nice one too. It takes a while to build, because it's custom. <sighs> you guys take care. Thank you for the love. Oh, look at the view that LJ had. You see the airplane? There it goes. Airplanes. Oh.
all is well. All will be well. God is in control. Much love. Take care. Thank you. I think this is another case where you have to be extremely careful about the friends you keep in your life. Guys, please pray for this family. Let's pray for Charmaine and LJ's sister and his baby brother because this is just devastating and I really feel for Charmaine's pain. I'm a mother myself. So to lose a child is a mother's nightmare and to feel so empty inside with so many questions on what happened, that's that's a tough thing to swallow. It's tough to process. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for this family. Please share this case because I definitely feel like it's a case that's overlooked and needs more attention. I'm praying that this family maybe hires a private investigator and file, and I hope they file a petition for this case to be reopened. Because I don't think LJ lost his life by just drowning in a lake. I feel like something else sinister might have happened. Father God, we all come together and we pray for LJ's family. We pray for Charmaine. We pray for um, LJ's sister, his little brother, his father, his family, and his friends. I ask you, Lord God, to just pour comfort and peace over this family right now. I know right now they're angry, they're hurting, because there's a lot of unanswered questions and Father God, what's done in the dark, Lord, I pray that it comes to light. You know all things. You know exactly what happened at that park. You know all the things that, you know, the public missed. You know every detail that was not exposed. So I ask you, God, to expose the truth. I ask you, Lord God, to, you know... If anyone was involved with this case, I pray that they come forward and speak truth, speak light. This innocent young man died under just weird circumstances. And his mother, his family, they're grieving, Lord. So I ask you, Lord God, to just place your hand over this case. I pray, Father, Lord God, that you reopen this case. You reopen this investigation so that the family could find out the truth. There's a lot of holes in this case. There's a lot of just uneasiness. So Father God, I pray that you just offer this family just some peace and truth. I'm asking you, Lord God, to pour your love over this family. Really your love. Because right now, I'm pretty sure they're feeling alone. They're feeling ton. They're feeling a lot of emotions. They're feeling grief. So I'm praying, Father Lord God, that you can, you can soon offer this family a peace of mind. Let your will be done, Lord God. I pray over this family, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Father God, I pray for this family to stay hopeful. To still look forward in the future. I pray that you give Charmaine strength every day when she wakes up in the morning, Lord God. Because I know it's tough to still take care of her baby boy. Still take care of her daughter while losing another child. And you don't know what happened, you know, to just go through that process every day is tough. So, Father God, I'm asking you to just give her strength. Give his father strength, his grandparents, his cousins, his family, his, his aunties, his uncles. Give everyone just strength to push forward during this time. And I pray for justice and I pray for truth for this family. I ask you, Lord God, that you protect my subscribers. I ask you, Lord God, that... You give us all discernment on the people that we call our friends. If they are not for us, if they are not good for us, Father Lord God, take them away. Take them far away. And only surround us, Lord God, with people that love you so that they're, so that they're able to really love us. Because times are getting dark. People, There's a lot of people out here that 
Their hearts is just not in the right place. So I thank you, Lord, for all the good that you're about to do for this family, that you're about to do for Charmaine. This is not the end. I know, Father Lord God, that you will come through for this family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But stay woke.